Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am showing you how to get this super old timey Hollywood red lip. Very subtle, very easy to do. Anybody can do this. It's going to look great on anybody. So if you're interested and want to find out how I did this, keep on watching. Alright, so I've already done my eyebrows and now I'm gonna prime and prep my face with my Nivea Men's Sensitive Post Shape Balm. If you haven't heard about the Nivea Men's Sensitive Post Shape Balm, you are missing out, girl, let me tell ya. A lot of beauty gurus have just been like raving about this product. It was originally introduced by Nikki Tutorials. She, she tried it, she said, Look, this product has a ton of glycerin in it. If you don't know what glycerin is, it's that stuff that makes makeup stick on your face. It's just like, if it has a ton of glycerin in it, then it must be perfect as a primer. And Lord behold, it sure was. Today, I'm gonna start with my eyes because I'm trying like this whole new thing where I start with my eyes first and wipe off any excess thing because I have the worst habit of letting fallout drip onto the tops of my cheeks. And since my cheeks are so perky, they catch all of it. And since we're doing a classic red lipstick look, I wanted to keep it safe and simple. And I'm using the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. I just got this palette in the mail today. I know I'm super late on the bandwagon, but I like to do my research on makeup before I buy it. So when I heard so many negative things about the second one, I wasn't really like leaning towards buying the first. And then I went to Sephora one day and I swatched them and I compared and I was like, okay, maybe this one is worth it. Maybe the first one is worth it. Let me buy it. Let me give it a try. That's what we're doing today. By the way, I do have a shirt on. Ugh. It's just, you know, strapless, but I, I have one, I promise. Anyways, so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. So let's just roll with it. I'm gonna take this hazelnut color and I'm just gonna put it in my crease as my transition color. And I'll be using my favorite fluffy brush, which is the Makeup Forever Wavy 242. And I'm just gonna apply it all over my crease. I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you have a better look. Oh, hello. And I'm really just buffing this out in circular motions, trying to make sure that it's nicely blended and very, very seamless. And I'm just gonna do this eye on camera. I'll do this eye off camera. Next, I'm gonna go in with milk chocolate just to deepen up that crease a little bit. And for this one, I'm using my Morphe M513 brush. This brush is amazing for blending. One of my absolute favorite brushes when I need to blend things out. As you can see here, all I'm doing is taking this color back and forth, back and forth, nothing too specific, concentrating the majority of the color on the outer crease part of my lid. Now I'm gonna use my Soft Ochre Paint Pot by MAC, and I'm just gonna apply that all over the lid. And I'm gonna create kind of like a cut crease effect. This is literally all I'm doing. The point of the Soft Ochre Paint Pot by MAC is to make the color that I'm gonna put on my lid really pop and not get lost into my own skin color. And then I'm gonna go back over the crease with my M513 brush. With no extra product added. This is to make sure that the paint pot cut crease line is perfectly seamless. Now I'm mixing a little bit of champagne truffle and a little bit of the white mocha, the two biggest colors in the palette, and I'm gonna put that all over my lid. For this, I'll be using a MAC 242 brush. I'm starting with champagne truffle and applying it from the innest corner of my lid all the way to the outer corner, and then I'll take white chocolate and just apply it on top to make the look a little more matte 
but not too much, if you know what I'm saying. And now I'm going yet again back in with my Morphe 513 brush to make sure it's all nicely blended. Back and forth, back and forth, you already know the drill. I'm going to put a little more of milk chocolate to make sure it doesn't get lost in the process. And just to deepen things up a little further, I'm grabbing my Morphe E17 and the semi-sweet right here. And you know I like my dimension, so I'm going to add a little bit to the outer corner and fade it into the middle corner. Not the middle corner, the middle part of my eye. Then I'll be going in with Makeup Geek's Vanilla Bean in the brow bone. I always go in with my Morphe 521 brush because I feel like this brush really diffuses it and makes sure that everything is perfectly blended out. Before I started recording, I ate the spiciest enchilada I have ever ate in my life and my mouth is still on fire. I had to drink like two cups of water and eat two Oreos for the taste to get out of my mouth. And it's still not completely out. Ugh. It was awful. I don't even like spicy food. Whenever I want to do a very, very deep, long, scandalous wing, I start by outlining it with eyeshadow, with black eyeshadow. So just in case I make a mistake, it's easier to fix it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I just grab whatever black eyeshadow I see or I have nearest me and I start outlining it with a eyebrow brush or a wing liner brush. Now I'll be going in with my Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper to line me up. And there I go, out of the frame again. Oh, I, I noticed it. Oh, I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. Oh, okay, okay. There we go. There we go. Just lining it up from inner corner to outer corner. Nothing new. That eyeshadow I put down first really helped me out, so I was able to be in and out in no time. I was trying to make this wink the liner very thin, not too extreme but very long to the point where it matches up with the outer point of my eyebrow. Quick tip for you ladies out there, your wing liner should never really go further than where your eyebrow stops at the edge at this point right here because then at that point it becomes very unflattering for your eye. So always keep that in mind when you're doing your eyeliner and you're trying to make it fleek as possible don't go past where your eyebrow stops. All right, so now that I've plopped on my lashes, these are Wispies by Velour Lashes. I cannot remember the name to save my life right now, but just know that they're Wispies and I'll have them listed down below when I do remember the name. So anyways, I've already primed my face and now I'm gonna go in with my Makeup Forever Ultra HD because Hollywood has always had a very flawless skin and Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick does just that for you. I'm a little heavy handed today and I plopped a bunch on. I'm going in with my Caitlyn O'Wow brush to really smooth things out. I'm such a fan of this brush mostly because of the pointed tip. And of course the like airbrush effect that it gives me. I feel like this brush really helps me get up into every nook and cranny on my face and I love that. I love you and I appreciate you, just so you know. You know you got a problem when you talk to your brushes. Whew. I'm scared I was gonna mess up my eyebrows there for a second. But on a serious note. This brush is everything. I honestly prefer it over my artist brush. I see you hot sauce really starting to pull it together. Hot sauce was my name in high school. It was a very catchy name that somebody gave me and I always thought it was my ROTC instructor who gave it to me. But 
My husband claims to this day that it was him. So I don't know, I don't know. He says that he used to ha need a code name for me and that he really loved hot sauce so he started calling me hot sauce so that he could talk about me with his best friend and I wouldn't know <laughs> for whatever reason. Back in the day when he had a crush on me so I thought that was really funny when he told me. It's a makeup forever kind of day so I'll be going in with my makeup forever ultra HD concealer in the color Y29. I'm not gonna use a corrector today even though I probably should but I don't know where it's at so whatever and I'm just gonna use this it cosmetics brush to apply it all over my wannabe highlighted parts I really wish that this concealer had like a wand or something because then it would be perfect I'm just so used to the NARS concealer and the naked weightless concealer being so easy to work with because of their wand because this is a great concealer it just needs a wand dang Juana back at it again with the Kaylin brush and that's what I'm using to blend all this out I always forget to use circular motions but it still turns out good so it's okay all right so now I'm a little pasty so I need some color I'll be using my Kevin Aquan sculpting powder to contour me a little bit and this Real Techniques expert face brush. As I was editing my video, I realized this part was very quiet and lonely, so I decided to fill the silence. This is me filling in the silence. For some reason on camera, it looks like I'm not blended, but let me tell you, I always blend to the best of my ability, so I'm not sure why it's looking like that. So now that that's on, I'm reaching into my Too Faced Cocoa Contour Chisel to Perfection palette to grab the dark cocoa. I'm using a Real Techniques buffing brush for this one. Just to add some warmth into my face. This is honestly probably one of my more favorite bronzers. I stay forgetting to put powder under my under eyes so it doesn't crease, but luckily this particular concealer is very, very hard to crease. So I'm in luck. And I'm using my Laura Mercier brightening powder to set those under eyes. The brightening powder is just like the translucent powder, only it brightens the areas that you want because it's white instead of beige, if you get what I'm saying. It really does help brighten you up, look, the difference between. And I feel like the brightening powder isn't as drying as the translucent powder. So that's really good for those of you who have very dry under eye, just as I do. Next, we'll be applying a little blush. I'll be using my Studio Makeup in Wildflower. This blush it is easily one of my favorite colors. Easiest way to apply blush, smile while you apply it. Now I'm going to highlight a little bit and I'm gonna apply some of my Becca Pearl highlight first. Filling in some more awkward silence here. Then going over with my So Hollywood Illuminator by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Because I mean, So Hollywood, Hollywood look. It goes hand in hand. Going under my under eye, gonna smoke it out a little bit, but not too much. Back into my chocolate bar palette. Grabbing semi-sweet from the palette. I mostly just went in on the outer third of my lower lash line. Just smoking it out really good. Going back in to apply some white chocolate into my inner corner. Because you guys know I love my inner corner matte highlight. And I'm just using my Sigma E30 pencil brush for that. 
do a little mascara on the lower lashes with my Tarte Lights Camera Lashes because it's my favorite lower lash mascara. You could also put some white in the inner part of your waterline to really make your eyes bigger if you want. I'm not trying to make them too big today. I'm just trying to make them sweet and romantic. Now I'm lining my lips with Trust in Red by MAC Cosmetics. It's the Pro Longwear Lip Liner, I believe. And now for the star of the show. I'll be using my American Doll by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This liquid lipstick has a blue undertone. Therefore, it will make your teeth look whiter. And who doesn't love extremely white teeth? Let me go fix my hair and I'll be right back. So that's it for this look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, like and subscribe. Comment below what you want to see next. And as always, may your eyebrows be fleek, your eyeshadow blended, and your concealer always, always, always fully creaseless. Love you guys so much. Mwah. Sorry if you hear yelling in the background. My family's here. Oh, yeah. And there goes Amar. <laughs>